choice. When we, when we begin to think about how he didn't have to do anything, he, 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 didn't, he didn't have to give us a second opportunity, we realize the magnitude and the, and the, and the powerfulness. I, I think about the, the expense of favor, the expense of it. it it's expensive. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Undeserved favor. I'm going to talk about undeserved favor and as the Holy Spirit would lead, go into what he would have us to go into. Very familiar scripture in, 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 in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10 where it says, for by grace ye are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, Unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. For by grace ye are saved. Notice that it is by grace we are saved. Grace is the source. We can have faith, but if God never chose to save us, then we would just have faith. We have to have faith in something that he's already decided to do. By grace, what is grace? Grace in the Greek is, means cherished, which is also interpreted in unmerited favor. Unmerited means that it is never based upon what you do or could do. God doesn't have to compensate us for anything that we do. He chooses to out of his sheer goodness. So grace is the source. Faith is the channel. And that's so important to understand because it's by grace that we are saved through faith. That's the same way we receive everything else. We think that when we pray to God and we ask for something, God is giving it to us because we deserve it. But God is not giving it to us because we deserve it. It's because of his unmerited favor and it's not based upon merits. And so when God does bless us with something, that when we say give the sacrifice of praise, we're praising him because he doesn't have to do anything. And so people will teach a prospect, well, if you sow this or if you do this, then God, got to, God don't have to do nothing. There are people who are no less blessed than we are, but because God thought, to, uh, thought it not robbery, they're living in huts and tents all the way in some third world countries. The things that we're blessed with. I, I remember a brother telling me, he's like, Johnny, I go on missionary trips to Honduras. And, and I used to think about the things that I, I complained about. Having, you know, uh, different things. You know, maybe I don't have my AC's not working right. Or maybe my car's not buzzing. So I ran across some people who live in the dirt huts without running water. Without electricity, they got to light candles at night. So we think about these things and what, 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 what's the difference? Favor. God's sovereign favor, unmerited favor, means that there is nothing. So it changes my mindset. There's nothing that I can do to, 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 to deserve it. And then there's nothing that I can do to get anything. Now, God does have a sowing and reaping system where he says, For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. But when I reap, it's not because I earned it. I'm not on God's payroll. Anything that God gives me, my mindset has to be of gratefulness. Anything that I get, if I got a roof over my head. So now it changes. It changes my level of gratitude when I understand that even if I've been serving of 10, 15, 20, 25 years, God don't owe me nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's only by his grace, his unmerited favor. Thank God for the favor yeah. of God. His favor, when you meditate on his favor. Lord, you didn't have to do it. Somebody's sick right now on their deathbed, writhing in pain, yeah. but you favored me. Yeah. The car 
accident that missed me. And see, I want other people to understand that we meet the love of God before we meet God. Mm -hmm. The love of God would say that he preserved us even before we made it to receive salvation. There are some people that were taken out of here, not that they would never be up without excuse, because everybody's received the message of salvation. No one can stand before Jesus and say, well, Lord, I ain't never heard of that. I ain't never heard you, so you have to let me on up in this heaven because I ain't never. No, 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 no. But there are some people who've been taken out early in life. There are some people who've gone through some circumstances. that God, I, I look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and God gave me this revelation many, many years ago. He said, son, there's some things that you, I'll deliver you out of. That means you'll see it, and I'll show it to you. It'll scare you, scare you out, of, out of your wits, and then I, 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 and I'll deliver you from it. There's some things I'll deliver you out of, meaning I'll allow you to see it, and then I'll put you in it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how many know that I would have been confused? Wait a second, I stood up for you, God. Are you still going to allow me to get into this fiery furnace? But God was proving a point, his glory. He wanted to get glory from the situation. So he allowed them to be placed in the fiery furnace so that he could show the people that when I am in the fire with them, because we know the fourth man showed up, that the fire had no power. Some people don't look like what they've been through. They tell you they testimony and they don't look like what they've been through. The people on the outside are like, wait a second. I know where you came from. I know where you were. I know where you've been, but there's no spell of smoke. There's no singes on you. There's nothing that shows that you were in a fire. Mm -hmm. And God delivered Shadrach and Meshach out of it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other part that a lot of times people don't want to hear, but there's things that God delivers us through. All three of those phases are not absent of the favor of God. God just gives us more grace to deal with what it is that we need to deal with. And he, by delivering us through, if you look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the one thing that was burned up in the fire was what bound them. He said, I saw four men thrown bound into the fire, but now I see, I see a fourth man, the three and the fourth man walking loose. So whatever the fire was designed to do, it did what God wanted it to do and not what the enemy, what the enemy meant for bad, God made it good. God's favor. In Esther, chapter 2, verse 17, And the king loved Esther above all women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. You have to go back and, and check out this this, this uh, story. I mean, I would, I would recommend reading the entire book of Esther. But it's a phenomenal book in where God reveals his favor on Esther. But the favor was not for naught. See, Esther was favored for a reason. God places us in position of favor for a reason. She wasn't just up there just to be blessed and be the queen and have all of these riches. God placed her in a position of favor because he needed her to do something. And one of the things that he needed her to do was step up for the children of Israel. And so God will place you in a position of authority by his favor, but don't get caught up like you just up there just to be up there. God says, no, nah, I got a purpose and a plan for you to carry out. Amen. And one of the things that I love that he said to her, that God, he, he used the man of God to say to her, he said, listen, if you won't do what I need you to do, I'm paraphrasing, I'll raise up another. Amen. So in other words, I've got you in this position of authority. I've got you with this anointing. I've got you in this place for a purpose. That's why I tell people, wherever you are, look around and find out the why. Why am I here, God? Why do I have what I have? Why am I in the position that I'm in? Why is this favor on my life? There are some people, they have the gift of gab. And we, they, they're thinking that the gift of gab is just for the gift of gab. They think they can just talk a cat off a fish truck, just to talk a cat off a fish truck. No, God wants you to use that for the kingdom. He favored you with that. Some people are good with mathematics. Some people are good with finance. Some people are good in business. Some people are good in all of these different things. Favor. The favor of God. God's favor. And again, it goes back to God was the cause. She obtained favor and grace. So grace, what is grace? Unmerited favor. Esther didn't earn that. 
God chose to favor her. Favor versus witchcraft. This is huge. Inside the body of Christ, outside the body of Christ, people do not know the difference. Sometimes people don't even realize that they're operating in witchcraft. People don't even realize that they've been bewitched at times. People think that just because he reverend, just because he passed, just because she ailed, and just because whatever, they can be witches. And so you say, well, wait a second. I, I didn't see him with the black fingernails, and she got a cauldron with some, some hot water in it and cackling. That's the image that Hollywood like to give us. So if they don't look like that, then they can't be a witch. They can't be a witch with a priest collar on. It can't be a witch with a title of elder, a pastor, a deacon, a bishop. They can't be a witch because they're inside of the church. Hmm. Witchcraft. Operating inside the body. And so, 1 Samuel 22 and 23. <clears throat> And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Samuel was basically rebuking Saul and letting him know. You remember, we talked about this, I want to say a couple of months ago, God had given him a, com a commandment to do certain things, kill everything, don't, don't save nothing and everything. He well, I save this because it's my idea and I'm going to do this because this is the right thing to do and I feel like God will want me to do this. And when we do that, we step outside of God's perfect will and his realm of what we want to do. So what Samuel is essentially saying, it's better for you to obey than to sacrifice. Amen. See, I can clap and I can shout and I can do all these things, but if I'm not obedient to God, God says, save all that. Save all that. I can't get up here and play and sing and do all of this stuff and then treat my wife horribly. God is like, wait a second, I'd rather you be obedient than to try to offer this false sacrifice. Because I'm not, I'm not hearing it. I'm not receiving it. That's why Jesus said these people honor me with their lips and their hearts are far from me. I'm watching obedience. Will you obey? For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You tell kids this today and they look at you like you're sideways. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me I'm operating in uh, witchcraft if I'm disobedient? Absolutely. That's what the words say. I ain't saying. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That means they're the equivalent. If God tells me to do something, obey your parents as in, as in the law, then I need to do that. Whether or not it makes sense to me, whether or not I agree with it, rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And that's just not on the children, it's, just, it's on us as well. As believers, whatever it is that God is telling us to do, he's saying when you rebel, rebellion means I'm going opposite of what the word of God is telling me to do, opposite of what he wants me to do. Now I'm operating in witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. There it is. Rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being king. Rejected the word of the Lord. Rejecting the word of the Lord means that, and notice what, what Samuel said in the, in the, in the scripture uh, above that. Where Samuel says, obey is better than sacrifice to hearken than the battle of friend. So he equated obeying as listening. How many times? I remember when I was growing up, boy, you weren't listening to me. Now, she know that I heard her because I got two ears and I nodded my head. But when the action didn't follow, that shows whether a person was listening or not. 
You can say, yeah, I heard you, but if the corresponding action does not follow, then that shows God, no, nah, you wasn't listening. To listen is to obey. He said, be ye doers of the word and not only hearers only. And so hearing the word of God follows with obedience. And if I'm not obedient, then I'm in rebellion to what God said. And in rebellion to what God said, I am now operating in witchcraft. Acts chapter 8, starting at verse 9. One of the things that witchcraft is, is a form, it's, it's manipulation. We're going to get into that in a little bit. That's huge. Sometimes people don't even realize that they're operating it in it. Or they do, but they want to lighten it and call it something else. Mm -hmm. They want to sugarcoat it. Well, I'm just, you know, <laughs> this is what I do. You know, I, I, you know, I know how to talk and I know how to do this and I know how to do that. You know, no, yeah. it's witchcraft. <laughs> and so, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city has used a sorcerer you sorcery rather, and bewitch the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was someone great, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because of that long time <clears throat> he had bewitched them with sorceries. Notice how they attributed to God what was actually the devil. They had attributed greatness to this man who was operating in sorcery, operating in witchcraft. And see, we, 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 we have to look more closely. God wants us to have discernment. Discernment is a gift. Because the enemy, it says, Paul said, they parade themselves as ministers of light. Mm -hmm. And so if they parade themselves as ministers of light, if they're both tear and wheat, and tear and wheat both look alike, the only way that I'm going to be able to separate the two and be able to discern is by the Spirit of God. I cannot trick myself into thinking that I am a good discerner on my own. I need the Spirit of God to be able to help me discern because these people were fooled. And so most people are looking at acts. Most people are looking at activity. Most people are looking at the outward appearance of a thing. But God said, I need you to look deeper. I need you to ask me to help you search. The Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. Amen. If I'm searching for the truth, then this, there's times, Lord, what is this meeting about? Well, who is this person? Well, well, why, what is this about? We have to be even careful in that sense when we're meeting with people. Lord, even if it's a business deal, even if it's a whatever, yeah. help me reveal what is the purpose. Because we can be tricked. We can be fooled. <laughs> we can be these people. Okay, he's a great man. He's working with the great power of God. But he bewitched him with sorceries. I see this operate more so in the realm of healing and miracles. And people have began to make it a prophet, a profiteering type thing. I see people wave coats and, and people fall on the ground. I seen one man of God and he, you know, he doing like this and the man pulling like this. And I said, God ain't in this foolishness. <laughs> And he's making himself to be the person with the power. But guess what now? When you look at the crowd, it's hundreds, thousands, and they, ah! And guess what else they doing? They're running up. Oh, my goodness. It's a good show. No discernment. Outward appearance of things that look like it's of God, but it's actually sorcery. One of the telltale signs that they really were being, that they really were studying and teaching the word of God. Anything that brings a man glory is a dead giveaway. Mm -hmm. If I'm, I'm constantly pointing to me, and I've seen some billboard, 
uh, prophet is so and so coming to town, and he come in with he he got his cane, and he you know oh prophet is so oh prophet oh prophet. It's like really, <laughs> you've made your name great. You've created a following. <laughs> but when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. <clears throat> then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem, had heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they had sent them Peter and John, who when they were come, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost, for he as yet had not fallen on none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> then, he laid hands, then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, <clears throat> saying, Give me also this power, that whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Simon had, Simon had got saved, but Simon wasn't yet delivered. <laughs> See, that's the part where we need to teach people. The person leaves the altar, but if the person hasn't renewed their mind, there's some things that they need to be delivered from. There are some things that don't always go away immediately. They have to be discipled. Simon still had that old tricking way in his mind. I'm going to make me some money out of it. I'm going to find a way to profit out of it. I need to find me. And so people are in. We, we can't be so ignorant that once a person is born again, if they have these ways to put them off in the leadership, because what happens is, they may be born again, but just like the Bible said when, Jay, when, when Paul was uh, uh, chastised, he said, listen, I can't speak unto you as under spiritual, but as under carnal. Whereas you are walking as mere men, there's envying, there's strife, there's all these things amongst you that you look like the world. Simon was saved. We saw the scripture where it says he was saved, but he wasn't delivered from them old tricking ways. He needed deliverance. And it, and it surfaced. When he saw that these people laid hands on these people and they received the Holy Ghost. There was an outward manifestation. Mm -hmm. There was something that Simon said, whoa, this is a different type of power. Man, if I can do this, mm -hmm. well, I could probably get me some more money. <laughs> and so, but Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee right. because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Mm -hmm. That's to all the people who say, give me $1,500 and I can give you a healing. That's to all the people. Sow a seed and God's going to bless you. Amen. God is not a banker, nor is he acting in transactions. That's a lie from the enemy. That's a form of manipulation. Amen. Anything that God would have, anything that the man or woman of God would have you to do that costs you something tangibly, you know it's not of God. Mm -hmm. God says, freely have I given. Amen. The gift of God is not this. This is not a, it doesn't cost anything in the natural. Mm -hmm. And so, witchcraft is simply attempting to get something by an outward means. Mm -hmm. Whether I make you fear, whether I intimidate you, and they'll play on your emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, brother, you know we, <laughs> you know we this building here, you know, and the Lord, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, it costs and everything. You know, what God would have you to do what God would have you to do now, you know, because uh, God needs, uh, you know, and, uh, and now I'm playing on your emotions. Amen. If it's the Spirit, all I have to do is lift Him up. Yes. The Holy Spirit yes. is a free agent. Right. He's going to put on your heart what He wants to be put on your heart. He's going to tell you what to do. You're going to do it because the Holy Spirit tells you, not because I got to manipulate you. If I got to play under your emotions, if I got to make you feel bad, if I got to beg you, is that really the spirit of God? No. That's manipulation. And that's witchcraft. That's witchcraft.
there, but people have been operating in it for so long till they don't even, I'll never forget, I was in a church one time, and it was a church that actually we were serving in because I knew they got a common chief, but I didn't know when, so I said, okay, God, I'm going to serve underneath somebody else. And there was a time when all I had to give, literally, Lady Brandon's my window, all we had to give was $2. And that's what we dropped in that bucket. Okay, God, this is this our seed. This is all we, all we can contribute tonight. Do you know that pastor brought that up? And this is how I knew in my spirit. I'm, I, see, if I, was a no, if, I was a, if I was a novice, I wouldn't have known. I probably would have been hurt and probably would have never came back, but I knew what spirit that was operating in. But again, not saying that he wasn't saved, but just like Simon... I'm going, to, I'm, going, I'm, going to twist, I'm going to manipulate this, but this needs to be taught. And so, well, somebody had the nerve to yield $2 in Wednesdays, da 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 Well, guess what? When God is dishing out the, this is verbatim, when God is issuing out the blessings, you get in the $2 line. Yeah. Hmm. He said that. He said that. And so now what you're saying is essentially, and there was a church full of people, is that God blesses me based on my tithe. But my word tells me that his grace is unmerited favor. Yeah. His grace is unmerited. Yeah. If it's unmerited, then it's not based upon the merits. Yeah. You mean to tell me that, 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 that James can give a thousand dollars and he gonna get a greater blessing because he gave a thousand and I gave two? Come on now. That was witchcraft. Yeah. It was a form of manipulation. And what it was was it was telling everybody else Give more so you be blessed more. Yes. Yes. I didn't take the bait. Yeah. That was that was the part of me stepping one foot out the door. Then I said, "Okay, God, it's time for me to go because he ain't he ain't line upon line, precept upon precept with that." <laughs> but that's how the enemy does. He does that, yeah. and because people are in positions of authority or in positions with the title, people. Who unbeknowingly are being given into witchcraft, they do what it is the man of God or woman of God is telling them to do. Yeah. He said, Your money perishes because you can't be, <clears throat> the gift of God can't be purchased with money. Thou hast neither no part nor lot in this matter, for the heart is not right in the sight of God. Yeah. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness and pray to God, and perhaps. The thought of thine heart may be forgiven. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And he answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come on me. <laughs> Rebuked him. That's not the only form of manipulation. If I got to bat my eyes at somebody 20 times and get them to do something, if I got to wear something tight or whatever, that's manipulation. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, that's, 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 you know, if I got to stick my chest out and flex my arms, or whatever, that's, that's manipulation. Mm -hmm. That's by lust. I'm trying to get something. If I truly believe that God indiscriminately blesses me and that the favor of God is on my life, I don't have to use witchcraft in order to get something. I don't have to make you feel bad for me in order to get something. I don't have to play upon your emotions. I don't have to give you anything operating, any type of witchcraft to obtain anything that God already desires to freely give me. Now, he might not give it to me in the time that I desire, but that's on me to be patient. I got to be patient. I got to wait on the Lord. And if I push past that, now I'm pushing past the spirit and I'm operating in witchcraft. That's it. Yes. Amen. Galatians chapter 2.21 is not up there, but I'm going to read it as the Holy Spirit gave me this. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Paul was talking about the law and grace. I do not frustrate the grace of how do you frustrate the grace of God? And that's Galatians chapter 2, 21. How do I frustrate the grace of God? 
I frustrated when I try to obtain something on my own merits, in my own worth, in my own intellect, in my own strength, in my own cunningness, in my own craftiness, whatever it is I'm trying to use, God is saying, I'd rather just have mercy on you. I'd rather you just operate in the grace of God. Grace, there's no work in the grace of God. Not saying that we don't work, but what I'm saying in this context is that the grace of God is what it is. Favor. Frustrating the grace of God. Attempting to work for something that I could never earn. Attempting to get something by ways and means of witchcraft or manipulation when God would rather you just pray and wait. Psalms 37, 25, one of my favorite verses. <clears throat> Got this revelation a long time ago. I have been young <coughs> and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging. I say, but I'm stopping right there. Say bread, but I'm gonna say begging. Paul, translation. It's been a long time. I've been a, I've been on this earth a long time. And I have not seen the righteous forsaken. God always takes care of those who are his. Amen. Nor his seed begging. Amen. I gotta beg you? Beg you to take care of something that he already says is his? Okay, um, now you can let people know. <clears throat> tell people different things. But if I got to beg you, really? We have no business begging anybody for anything. God is the one. One of the things that I've learned that if God is the one that led you to it, yeah. if he, give, he allows you to give birth to something, then he is the child's father. Amen. We don't serve a, a, a father who's a deadbeat. That he will take care of what it is that he has birthed in you. The thing that he has led you to. The thing, if you say this is God's house, guess who's going to take care Can you imagine? God himself said, nah, I ain't going to make sure them bills pay. Nah, I ain't got time for that. I ain't going to make sure that happens. Right? No, it's God's house. Yes. It's God's house. Whatever ministry it is, yes. you can let people know, but begging. Mm -hmm. I got the couple, well, you know, we need such and such. And I know you did this last week, but, um, you know, uh, we just kind of down. And um, if you could just... Uh, I've been in services mm -hmm. where the collection was taken up. So I'm taking my witness. The collection was already taken up, and the woman of God who was collecting for the man of God had the audacity. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need another hundred dollars. Did God just download that to you? Or did you look at that and say, I need some more money? Yeah. It actually went back around to people. If you could just give another $20, mm -hmm. if you could just give another $10, the man of God would really be blessed if you could just give because we <laughs> need that another $100. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, I need to back away from you, sister, because I'm ready for the, 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 the yeah. thunder or lightning to strike down. How dare you? On, God gives what he would have you to give. Yes. How dare you go back and say, well, that ain't enough. We need more. In that sense, you are operating just like what that scripture said, begging. Operating in witchcraft, not even knowing it. <clears throat> if it's good for you. Oh, this is a tough lesson right here. Sometimes it can be a tough lesson. But when you release yourself and understand <clears throat> and you relax in his favor. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Notice he said the Lord will give. Psalms 84, 11. The Lord will give grace and glory. Watch this. No Will he withhold from them that walk uprightly? Amen. Amen. Two things working there. 
If you didn't get it, either you're not walking uprightly, being disobedient, God said, no, I need, I need you to walk in obedience, or it's not good for you. There are some things that I thought would have been good for me. There are some times when I prayed, God, I want out of this situation, and God said, no, you being in this situation is good for you. Might not feel good. Might not seem good. Might be scratching your head at night saying, man, I'm tired of this. But God's saying, I'm working this together for your good. Amen. So now I have to go back and say, do I trust God? Or do I think I know better? So now I got to rest in that. If I don't have it yet, then it's not good for me either right now or ever. Amen. In the natural, we love our children. Son come to you at eight, nine years old, he said, I want a porch. You ain't finna give me that porch. You ain't ready for that porch. I don't care if you wash all the dishes you want to wash, you clean your room up, you can rake the backyard, you can massage my feet, whatever it is you can do. You can pat me, massage me, but you're not getting it. Not because I don't love you. You're not mature enough for that right now. So why am I going to give you something that's A, going to cause you harm, danger, or kill you, and other things that God says are no good for us are things that he knows are going to take our focus and attention away from him. Yes. That's like us, you know, we, we, we love our spouses and we say, you know, uh, uh, if you had the, the, the crystal ball, so to speak, not a crystal ball in the sense of, of like a, a witchcraft or anything like that, but if God shows you, listen, if she gets this, she ain't going to pay you no more attention. You're like, oh, man, we, you can't get that. Oh, you can't. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I know it, it's not good. And so God knows that there are things that will take us away, our focus away from him, that will get us into a Martha mode where we're so busy, and God said, no, that ain't no good. You might want it really, really bad. But God says, no, it is no good for you. And so in that moment, I have to resist the temptation to operate into witchcraft and to push past what God is telling me. No, he's slamming doors on every side and push past that to try to get something that he already knows is no good. Testimony. That same church we were at with the $2 line. Before that line happened, we had talked to him, already in ministry, came to the man of God. Somebody told us it would be good because they had a nice big building. We said, well, you know what, God? be good for us to put a school here. It'd be good. At least we thought. It was a way that seemed right. But then, so, we went ahead and proceeded. The man of God said, oh, wow, they, yeah, we got plenty of space, and we could do this, and we could do that, and uh, right in the right spot in the community and everything. We had decided and everything, and so we started the process, and everything started falling through. This fall through. That fall through. Can't get the plans for the building. Need the plans for the building so you can submit to the Department of Education. Can't get that. They don't know this. They don't know that. This, that. And all the miscommunication all the way around. You talk to the past wife. She don't know what the husband said. And the husband don't know what the wife said. And they say you can have this. They say this. She say, no, you can't have that. You can do this. And all of this confusion. She frustrated. Tears like, God, I want to do this. And I'm frustrated too because I want it for him. We wanted this as ministry. God, why? Well, you know, you gotta be, sometimes we talk to God like this. Lord, this is what we, we want to do this for you, God. And we want this building for you and for the community. And, 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 and the devil's in the way. And God said, no, nah, the devil ain't in the way. I'm blocking this, Joker. I'm the one blocking. And the reason why we knew it was God, we left and started where God wanted us to start at. And within a month, month and a half, less than three months, Landlord came and shut the building down because they weren't paying the bills. Everything in that building, from sound equipment to everything, the landlord confiscated. Guess what would have happened if our school was in that building? Everything we would have had would have been confiscated. I tell her that, she'd be like, don't say that. I said, if you would have had the kids coming up to you, let's grab them. Can I come to your school? No, baby, you, you got to go back to public school because they don't shut the building down. Either. But God's wisdom, he knew it wasn't any good. And so when he shuts it down, you have to have the perception in your spirit, okay, God, this ain't you. 
This is not you because whatever he, he said, it has no sorrow. Amen. Amen. Not that there won't be struggle, not that there won't be challenges, but the sorrow. God will shut stuff down, and I thank God for closed doors. We got, we thank God for open doors, but we need to thank God for closed doors. Amen. Thank God for those opportunities that He says, "No, that's not an opportunity. It looks like one, but that's not my will." And then I, we have to resist the temptation to push past and say, well, let me see what I can finagle. Let me see what I can do. Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. <coughs> this is where we, we, we understand and we trust God. Understanding and trusting God. The favor of God. Still talking about his favor. Still talking about favor versus we pray. Still talking about when it's good for us. Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you? If the son asks him bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Watch this. If, the, if he then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give good things to them that ask him? If you don't get it, it's not a good thing. The key in that verse was, I know how to give good things. There are some things, even as a little child, there's poison that looks like candy. You ever seen some of them uh, pods that they uh, use to wash clothes with? They, they got the little mixed colors. If you look at that, that looks like a piece of candy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A child don't know what that is. So guess what the child does? Yeah. Hey, I want that. Or he'll point to it, I want that. And that look, and you're like, no. Because they can't comprehend, they think the no means you're keeping me from something good. Yeah. Why would you keep me from something good? And you're like, no, that's poison. Mm -hmm. But because my ways are higher than your ways, my thoughts, my understanding is higher than your thoughts, you can't comprehend the no. Right. But now it's beyond you to say, well, I need to try to understand. I just need to trust Daddy. Yes. Come on, man. Good gifts. My father, and that's something we need to proclamate. We need to make proclamation. Yes. My father knows how to give good things to me. Yes. And if I'm praying for something and it ain't coming through yet or it ain't coming through right now, then it must not be good for me right now. And I trust my father. Thank God for his favor on my life that is not only revealed when I get stuff, but revealed when I don't get stuff. That's his favor. I have to rest in that and understand that God's favor is still upon my life when I can't perceive what he's doing or why he's doing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He said, if you ask for a piece of bread, I'm going to give you bread. Why? Because bread is good for you. Yeah. But there's sometimes the enemy will parade a piece of bread that's really a stone, like the pods from the washing machine. It's parading as candy, but it's not candy. So guess what? When we point at it, Daddy, can I have that? No. You don't even understand what you're asking for. James chapter 1, verse 17. And I'm going to read in the Amplified. The way the text comes out in the Amplified. James 1.17. It's going to expound it. <laughs> every good thing, every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights, the creator and sustainer of the heavens, in whom there is no variation, no rising, nor setting, or shadow. Cast by his turning, for he is perfect and never changes. Every good thing and every perfect gift is from above. The 
here are some gifts that the enemy tried to give us. They're not good and perfect. They tarnished. And they cause us to, to turn away from God. They cause us more harm than good. They cause us to not uh, stay in line with his word. Every good thing and every perfect gift is from above. Comes from God. And that's our prayer. The favor of God is upon me. That's no question. We need to recognize that the favor of God is upon me. So, Lord, help me have revelation as to what it is you're doing right now. Not only that, to trust. Trust in your timing. Sometimes we frustrate the grace of God because things don't happen in the time that we want them to happen in. There's some stuff I wanted yesterday, but God says, no, I got my perfect time. Not only that, there's some things that God wants to do because he wants to get the glory. He told the children of Israel, I'm going to deliver you, I'm paraphrasing, so that you don't walk yourself up and say that your own hand has got you the victory. So that your own hand don't say that you got the job. So your own hand don't say that you were the cause of the success of the business. So that your own hand don't say that you're the reason why this is happening. God said, I want to remove all ounce of flesh. I want to remove everything so that they'll see that it was the favor of God. <clears throat> on your life. One thing that favor does, though, is create enemies. Favor creates enemies. In Psalms chapter 23, verses 5. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 23, verse 5. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Why don't you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies? God is still trying to... See, God, there's no throwaways. God would allow you to be blessed in front of people who are antagonistic towards God to try to draw them to God. The same people that witnessed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being thrown into the fiery furnace, God made an audience... So that when they were brought out of the fiery furnace, it said the, the, the administrators and the, the king and this, that, all of these people were standing around. And they saw Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, who's fought the fire that had no power over them. That was God's favor over their lives being revealed. He made a table before them in the presence of their enemies. He doesn't desire to bless us just in front of people who are already saved. Do we ever hear the term preaching to the choir? It ministers to me, but when someone who's not saved sees that this person had cancer and God completely healed them, that's a testimony that draws them to Christ. People need to see they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The favor of God on your life is a testimony to other people. And God desires it to be a blessing. If he desires it to be a draw. Favor creates enemies. In Genesis 37 verses 3 and 4. Genesis 37 verses 3 and 4. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. He stood out. The favor of God will cause you to stand out. The favor of God will cause you to have attention drawn to you. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they did not congratulate. They weren't happy. They hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Hated for being favored when the favor didn't even originate from you. Can you imagine that? That, 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 that? that happens today. People don't like you because God favored you, but the favor of God really had nothing to do with you. It, by grace, unmerited favor, now I'm serving God and I'm walking in his statues, but it's not... I'm not earning any, I, I can't earn, can I put a price tag on anything that God do for me? That would really cheapen what God does for me. Well, you know, I walked right for 10 years and that's why I got what I got today. Really? 
You walking right for 10 years is the price tag for what God did for you. He healed you. So now it's a price tag. You walk right 15 years and your 15 years was worthy of you getting healed. No. God was the originator of the cause. He's the originator of the effect. His favor is on my life. But guess what? When they see the favor of God, carnal people will hate you and don't even know why. Jealous of you without a reason. Envious of you. Oh, she thinks she all that. Oh, she does. Look how she talking. Look how she walk. Look how he do this. I can't stand. Why you can't stand? <laughs> I'm just doing, I'm just doing, oh, see, we were made in his image and his likeness. But we have to recognize this is something that we have to realize and we got to get out of this because this is what cripples a lot of people. And I'm going to get to it in, in just the next verse. We got to realize that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Stop trying to figure out why this person don't like you. Stop trying to figure out why people are up, uh, they're, they're antagonistic towards you. It's spiritual. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. They can put some fleshly names on it. I don't like you because of this, but when you boil down to it, the Bible is not lying when it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. They think that it's because of something physical. They think that it's because of something you did, something you said, the way you walk, the way you hold your head. But in actuality, if you're not being led by the spirit, you're being led by the devil. And so if I'm being led by the devil, the devil wants me to be hateful towards you. And so now we try to curtail what we do. We try to curtail. Well, maybe not. Well, I ain't going to wear that because that's too flexible. Well, you know, he did bless me with these boots. And, and I'm, I'm going to get to that in this next verse. Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. <clears throat> Jeremiah 9, chapter 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But him that glorieth, glory in this. Another translation, that him that boasteth, boasteth, boasteth in this. That he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. For all these things I delight, saith the Lord. Stop apologizing to people for the favor of God over your life. Stop trying to explain why God has blessed you the way that he's blessed you. God is telling, I want you to boast in me. I was a time when uh, we had some relatives come over, one of my little cousins, and I had to catch myself because it's a false, this is like a false humility. You don't, you don't really want to, you don't really want to, uh, uh, what's the word I'm calling, uh, shine a light on what God is in. So he's walking through the house and he's like, man, this is the biggest house I ever seen. Y'all rich. And I, and I started to correct him and say, no, nah, we ain't. And I said, no, nah, speak that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> because the tendency is to draw the light away from what God has done because we feel embarrassed by what God has favored us. We need not be embarrassed because the favor of God is on our life. He said, if you're going to boast, do it in me. Well, thank God, praise God. Yes, the Lord blessed me with these shoes. Yes, the Lord blessed me with this car. Yes, the Lord blessed me with this house. Yes, the Lord blessed me with this job. Yes, he keeps on blessing me. Thank you, Jesus. He's the one. He's the reason. Not what you know. <laughs> and that's the tendency. That's the enemy. We want to shrink away from giving God glory because the enemy wants to make us feel bad about what he's blessed us with. The favor of God. Joseph, he got that vision. He told his brothers, now maybe it wouldn't have been me. I would have been like, they already hate me. I ain't going to tell them what the, what the Lord had showed me. I seen y'all sheaves bowed out of my sheaves, was recommended y'all to be. And he, you know, I, I, I might have kept that to myself. You know, they already hating on me. I ain't going to, you know, <laughs> I might not. Have. But God was showing Joseph, and he's revealing it to us. It ain't about you, it ain't about them. It's about me. And guess what? When you tell them that it's unmerited, they know that God is no respecter of persons. What he did for me, he can't do the same thing for you. What he blessed me with, he can bless you with. And so stop feeling the need to not share or not shed light on what God, apologizing. And I caught myself. 
myself. I was there. Y'all, Rick. No, I said, no, Rick. What? Yeah, say that. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because it's not about calling those things which be not as though they were. And sometimes when people prophesy over you, when they say things over you, the tendency is to shrink away like they're attributing the great. No, 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 no. They're attributing what they see God getting ready to do or what God has done or what God is doing in your life. So say, thank you, Jesus. Because when I get to where it is that you're saying, when, when I get what it is that you're saying that God is saying that he's going to give me or what you see in my life, I'm still going to point the glory to him. But not the wise man, mighty, rich. Let him that glory more than this. I understand and know of the Lord. That even when all of this is gone, because it say heaven and earth shall pass away. Yes. My word won't go away. Mm -hmm. His word to us is that we are accepted in the beloved. His word to us is that we have the favor of God mm -hmm. on our lives. Favor brings rest. Yes, favor brings rest when you know that regardless of how things seem, regardless of how things appear, regardless of what's going on, the favor of God is upon your life. That's something you can take to the bank. That's something that God said is perpetual. Just keep walking with me. Just keep walking with me. And never get the mindset, even, and this is the mindset that, never get the mindset that when you're doing whatever it is that you're doing for God, that somehow what you're getting is a direct result of that. It is a byproduct of that. But I can do what we can do what we do for God and He not bless us. That's the prosperity man. If you do this, then God will do that. God is not a banker. God will bless us, but that's not the that's I can't, I'm not I'm not working for God. God does not have me on the payroll. If He never does anything else for us. He's already shed the most expensive thing that he could ever shed. And that's the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. He said, if I done did that, there's nothing else I can do here on earth. That, pale, that Everything else pales in comparison. There's nothing else that, the house, the house, a car, that, that, that's nothing. As a matter of fact, that's going to perish. But our relationship, your relationship, your spot, your name being written in the Lamb's book of life. He even told his disciples, he said, listen, he said, no, no, even the demons are uh, subject to us. And he said, don't marvel at that. Jesus basically pressed it listen. You're going to marvel at something. Marvel that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Marvel at the fact that you have eternal life. You can marvel at you people marvel at that. Well, he got a Bentley or he got a Benz or she got this. And she said, no, I don't marvel at that because that stuff will go away. Guess what? When that hearse driving away from that funeral home, he ain't take none of that stuff with him. It wasn't nothing transferable to heaven. But his relationship with me and the things that he did for the kingdom of God. His favor. So at this time.